Hey there, it's Nathan Crane, founder of the Panacea Community and executive producer of Unify Fest. And I'm super happy you're with us today for the second annual Self-Reliance Summit. I mean, this summit is really dedicated to bringing you real-world practical solutions and advice for living more self-reliant, interconnected with your community, and sustainable. It's really about building skills for the new world and helping each of us realize how to live more in harmony with the planet. And up next on the summit is our friend and colleague, Mike Adams. Mike, also known as the Health Ranger, is an outspoken consumer health advocate, award-winning investigative journalist, internet activist, and science lab director. He's a founder and editor of naturalnews.com and has received accolades and testimonials from several key influencers in the natural health space, including Dr. Michael T. Murray and raw food pioneer David Wolf. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for joining us, man. Hey, Nathan. Thanks for having me on. It's, it's great to join you. I love your summit. Love what you're doing. Happy to be part of it. Awesome. Well, thank you. So we're going to dive right in. Today we're talking about how to grow your own tax-free food and medicine without using electricity or soil. So, Mike, maybe you could kick this off by beginning to talk about you know, why the commercial food supply isn't working, why it's not healthy, <laughs> and, and what it's really doing to, to our society. We, it's, it's time to have a new paradigm in looking at where our food comes from and how we acquire it. So if you go back in history and you, and you look at a couple hundred years ago, more agrarian societies, more people grew their own food. A very large percentage of the population did. Uh, specialization of skills in society was limited. So a lot of people farmed. They may have done some other things on the side. You know, they worked for the railroad or they worked at the local government. But when they went home, they were farmers. They grew a lot of their own food. And that system was very self-reliant because if there were problems in the food supply, you could grow your own or you knew somebody, you had a neighbor, you could trade or barter with or they could show you how to grow your food. They could share seeds, things like that. So today we have, of course, a highly specialized society where people have very specific skills. You know, we've got engineers and mathematicians and programmers who have nothing to do with agriculture or growing food. So they don't know how to grow it. They're not really interested in growing it. They get paid a relatively large amount of money to have their special skills in their areas of, you know, again, technology or medicine or what have you, uh, law, you name it. They, they go to work. They work their jobs. They earn money. They then pay a pretty large percentage of that money to the government, right? Taxes, federal taxes, state taxes, what have you. They then take the money that's left over from that and they go to the grocery store to purchase food that was grown by somebody else in nutrient-poor soils, usually food that's been sprayed with toxic pesticides and herbicides or grown as GMOs, for example, food that is nutritionally depleted and in many ways dead by the time they get it at the grocery store. So we've got these very, very bright people, some of the smartest people in society who have these highly specialized jobs. They are getting the worst food that is worse than what their ancestors would grow themselves a few generations ago when they were, quote, dirt poor. Right. But I ask you, Nathan, who's wealthier? Because the people that are growing their own food have their health. They've got contact with the earth. They've got sunshine. They've got you know, healthy soils. They can, they've got self-reliance. Meanwhile, all these so-called high-paid experts are dying of cancer, dying of diabetes, dying of heart disease, Alzheimer's, dementia is, is a pandemic, uh, suppressed immune systems because they are living off of food that is so nutritionally depleted, it's worse than what we would have fed to prisoners in the 1950s. So, so that's, I want to set that tone that when you grow your own food, you are wealthy and you are successful regardless of how much money you, quote, earn in the marketplace. And when you grow your own food, you don't pay taxes on it. Right. And that, that's a whole shift in, in our consciousness, right? Because we've gotten to this place in society where, like, we think, you know, we're not supposed to grow our own food. That's for the lowly peasants. That's for the farmers <laughs> over there. That, you know, and I don't know where that came from. I bet we could analyze and figure it out. But it's certainly, you know, I mean... 
even even people who are heavily into sustainability. Somebody I interviewed recently was like, "Yeah, but I still don't think everyone should grow their own food." I'm like, "Yeah, but is it, like you, right? You're, you're a great example. You have a laboratory. You're doing scientific research. You're testing food. You're doing all these things as a very specialized kind of scientific level. And yet, at the same time, don't you grow a lot of your own food?" Absolutely. Yeah, I do sprouting. You know, I use the non-circulating hydroponic system that, that we created, the food rising system. Uh, I grow food in soils. I Here in Texas, I actually grow my own bananas, believe it or not. So we get our own banana harvest, and then I test those bananas here in the lab uh, to make sure that they're really clean, and of course they are. Uh, I'm completely into growing my own food, being self-reliant, but then also pursuing the science side of it, which is what happens here at this laboratory, uh, CWC Labs. So, yeah. There's no reason why we all can't grow at least some portion of our own food. Right, and it, it really takes us back to that um, that power, taking back you know the, the the power of one of our most basic necessities, and that is that is food, that is feeding our bodies, feeding and nourishing our families. And um, I mean, most people watching this already get that. I think there's probably a few people that are just starting to decide if they want to start growing their own food. Um, but I'm sure most people are like, yeah, I'm growing my own food or I want to, you know, now what do I do? You know, how do I do it in an efficient way, in a way that is healthy, that is easy, that, you know, everyone's so busy with their jobs, of course, right? Right. So how are they going right. to grow their own food efficiently in, in their spare time? Well, again, there are, there are solutions for that now. I mean, I don't have a lot of time. I'm not working the soil on my knees for hours a day. Uh, I grow most of my food without soil. I use the food rising system. There are a lot of hydroponic systems out there. Some are circulating, some are non-circulating. I like things that are simple. No pumps, no electricity. Just sunlight, water, and nutrients. And you can grow food. So we're successfully growing beets, all kinds of lettuces, uh, all kinds of herbs. And you know, I want to speak to this, that a lot of people, they think about growing their own food. At first, they're just referring to calories and nourishment. How do I grow enough calories to live? But that's just the beginning. You see, you've got that spectrum. I mean, I'll start it over here visually. If this is food as calories, then you realize here you've got food as medicine. So all these nutrients that are synthesized by the plants themselves, thousands of phytochemicals that actually we analyze here in the lab from curcuminoids in turmeric to phycocyanins in spirulina, these are all disease-preventing nutrients, right? But then from here, you can go to just growing your own medicine, which is the other end of, of that spectrum. So you can do just food as calories. That works, but that's not all that Mother Nature has to offer. You can go with food and then medicine, like real herbal medicine. You can grow your own oregano. You can extract oregano oils using simple steam distillation techniques. You can make your own herbal tinctures with alcohol or water even. You, you can grow an entire medicine chest that can save your life and keep you alive, especially if anything happens in society where medicines are hard to get. And that's been happening all over the world in other countries right now, like Brazil or Venezuela trying to get medicine. Forget it. So, you know, you've got this whole spectrum. Start with food, but realize there's a lot more for you. Yeah, talking about medicine, I was just looking at um, one of the tinctures I made recently and I realized that this simple three-herb combination is like the number one thing you want to have on hand at all times, you know, because it just about covers everything. And, and those three herbs yeah. are, are things you can find out in your backyard in most places, which I did. I found them in my yard and found them up in the mountains. Yep. But the three are, are yarrow, um, dandelion, and molin, and they cover just about everything from respiratory to liver to lungs yep. to brain to skin to, to swelling, inflammation, you name it. It's like just about everything. I mean, three simple things, and you could grow those easily yourself, simply just not by pulling Think, them, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, we've got a bunch of yarrow blooming. Um, well, not, not the flowers, but the, we have a yarrow here in Texas that has kind of a white, a little sort of white groupings of flowers as, yeah. it, as it comes out. It's blooming here now. And it's everywhere. And when you harvest wild yarrow, it's, of course, more potent and stronger than anything that you would get you know, from a store or even an herbal supply shop. Wild crafted herbs are beyond food. They're real, real serious medicine. 
and they they can treat medical conditions. You know, uh, I just did a story recently where the the country of Brazil has now approved for medicinal use uh, the CBD, the cannabidiol from uh, hemp. Wow! Uh, so hemp grows as a weed, right? And yeah. if you extract the right nutrient from it. You can treat cancer with it, according to the government of Brazil. Also, Parkinson's disease, seizures, and other conditions. They've actually approved it for treating cancer, which is, which is really a first in the world. That's huge because you know you hear so many testimonials from people who use um, cannabis and, and CBD specifically with the right you know amount of THC uh, connected to it that do completely heal themselves of cancer. Yep. And so a country yep. actually saying, yes, this is medical, that's pretty awesome. Well, the, you know, the, the truth is that, that hemp and, and cannabis could really devastate the, the for-profit cancer industry. I think it's that valuable. It's, it's, it's compassionate medicine, it's effective medicine, and it's safe medicine. And it could save lives and it could end suffering across hundreds of thousands of people just in the United States alone every single year. So... I know this isn't a, a hemp discussion, but it's relevant because it's just one example of things that you can grow yourself that are medicine, that are powerful medicine that can save lives. So let's, let's go back a little bit more on the, the nutritious density of you know, homegrown food versus you know, regular store-bought food. We know the soil, especially here in the United States and a lot of, a lot of other countries now too, is being completely depleted of minerals and and uh, nutrients for the plants. We know that the topsoil is being eliminated and, and washed away. You know, we know that the natural uh, forests, which have naturally provided this continuous cycle of life of nutrient density for food, um, is being stripped away. You know, consistently around the world. So, you know, maybe you can speak a little more on kind of the scientific level in terms of vitamins, minerals, etc., that are needed for our bodies to really thrive, and maybe how we're missing that by not growing our own food. Yeah, and let me start with a really important distinction that some people get confused about. Uh, plants, as you know, provide both minerals and what we call nutrients or vitamins or um, uh, phytochemicals. They're sometimes called plant-based chemicals. It's important to understand minerals are not created by the plant, but the vitamins are. So plants are synthesizing vitamins. They're creating carotenoids, for example. They're creating the curcuminoids. They're creating, uh, hemp is creating THC. You know, it didn't find THC in the soil. Right. It created it. It synthesized it. But the minerals are in the soil. The minerals are, in effect, mined out of the soil by the roots of every plant. And minerals cannot be created by the plant. You can't create elements. You can't create uh, lead or copper or magnesium. You have to find it, right? So when plants are grown season after season after season in the same soils, and they're only fed really three nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, to, to make them grow. Those are the fertilizers that are usually put on crops. It effectively turns into a mining operation, an agricultural mining operation where all the minerals that used to be present in the soil are mined out every year until they're depleted more and more and more and basically turned to zero. So the plants, they're just getting the NPK but not the minerals. And so those plants are devoid of the zinc that you need, the trace amounts of copper, the trace amounts of chromium, the magnesium, all these things that plants can't create. But when you grow your own plants, you see, you have the choice. You can control the environment. You, if you're using a hydroponic system, you can feed them soluble mineral nutrients that provide massive, a massive amount of mineral nutrition to the plant roots. And so then when you eat those plants, you are, in effect, eating nutritional supplements in the form of plants. And you can even do this with a sprouting system. You know, in every sprouting system, you feed it water. There's some kind of water, right, and it's sprayed or dripped into the sprouting trays. When you, you can simply add minerals to that water, trace minerals, for example, magnesium, calcium, and other, other trace elements, you will get sprouts that are themselves highly dense, highly nutritious, living foods with bioavailable organic minerals that have been actually put into an organic chemical composition by the plant itself. You cannot buy food that good. Uh, even the best 
vitamin in the world, the best food-based supplement in the world, can't compete with that. If you really want the world's best nutrition, you have to sprout it yourself and feed the sprouts or, or grow lettuce and feed the lettuce or grow herbs and feed the herbs. This is the secret. And not a lot of people really talk about this because the, the, they'll talk in common terms like, oh, green beans contain you know, this much zinc. Right. Not true. If the soil has been mined, right. if the zinc's gone, green beans can't make zinc. Something to think about. Yeah, you know what I find fascinating, and that's what you said, bioavailable, is the, the fact that um, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, like, say you were going to go outside and you know, pull up a bunch of minerals or rocks or rock dust or something that's full of minerals and eat it, you know, your body cannot absorb <laughs> the minerals from that. We're not designed right. that way, but the plants do. They convert those minerals into bioavailable, so we eat the plants, and that's how we get minerals. So we yes. have so so Very we good. need we need minerals and we need plants and we need plants that are fed minerals to keep our <laughs> bodies from you know experiencing a lot of these diseases that we're seeing run rampant in this country and now around the world too like cancer as we know is near fifty percent of people which is ridiculous I mean you know yeah it's it's insane and it's not people think it's okay and it's normal and it's not it's a complete out of balance of our diet and lifestyle right well yeah let me show you actually I'm, I'm going to grab a prop that I have here for other videos, just a second. Um, this, it will blow your mind. This is a Similac Go and Grow. This is, so this is, this is sold as food for babies. Let me read just the first five ingredients or so, okay, because this will blow your mind. This is what our babies are being raised on. 42.6% corn syrup solids, ingredient one. Oh, Got that? Oh. Corn syrup solids, right? Okay. And you know it's from genetically modified corn. Second ingredient, 14.7% soy protein isolate. <laughs> another, from another GMO crop. GMO soy. Then it's got high oleic safflower oil, 10% sucrose, refined white sugar, soy oil, and then it goes into things like some coconut oil and things. But think about it. This is, this is genetically modified soy plus processed refined sugar. And I guess because it has a teddy bear on it, it's supposed to be good for your kid. How many grams of sugar per serving does that say for a little, uh, for a little baby on the back? Well, that's a, good, that's a good question. That's interesting. Carbohydrate, it has uh, 10, 10 grams of carbohydrates, but it doesn't list sugar. That's interesting. Huh. I could only imagine. That's like, yeah. That's yeah. like diabetes in a can right there. Yeah, really. If you, if you want your baby to grow up diabetic and... And living on insulin, that's the way to do it. Uh, so, you know, we, we live in a world where the mainstream, this is mainstream stuff, the mainstream is insane when it comes to food. You have to be mentally ill to feed your baby this. What you and I are talking about and your listeners and all the people that are into uh, sustainable food and home gardening, that's normal. That's that's human origins. That's how we've lived in harmony with this planet, you know, for eons. That is what your body is designed for. You're, just like you mentioned, Nathan, your body isn't designed to, to eat rocks and eat ground up oyster shells and call that calcium. It's designed to get calcium that's been transformed into a bioavailable matrix by the plants. See, plant roots can eat rocks and then they can turn the rocks into the kinds of minerals that your body expects. And so when you eat plants, you get those available for you. But you know, they can throw calcium in here and they can call it calcium fortified for babies. It's a joke. It's, it's, it's a, in my opinion, it's a nutritional crime against children. I mean, this, this, this should be illegal. You know, it, it, people watching that maybe are feeding their children, um, you know, food like that that just aren't aware of it. I mean, something simple yeah. you can do. I mean, we feed, you know, we have a seven-month-old baby right now. He's just starting to transition from breast milk. And, um, you know, all we do is get organic fruits and blend them up and feed them some fruits, you know, some organic veggies and blend it up and feed yeah. them some. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, our bodies are designed to take in these plants in all forms and to thrive in it, right? But, but that's it, right. But again, even organic now... Well, I, you know, there's this huge debate. I mean, I know people are like, yeah, I don't even waste money on organic because they still use chemicals. And blah. I say, yeah, you know, they might still use five or six chemicals sometimes, depending on the farmer. 
we try to get a lot of our produce from local farmers that we know aren't spraying with anything. Um, and we're now growing, you know, uh, more and more of our own food, so we don't ever have to worry about any of that. But at the same time, you know, wouldn't you rather have five pesticides in your system than 35 pesticides and chemicals? Or, you know, as we're talking about going much further, is, you know, growing it yourself and not having to use any chemicals. But my point is, you know, growing food um, beyond just this traditional monocrop, you know, tilling the soil, growing where you have to add fertilizer, but actually learning, you know, permaculture principles, companion planting, nitrogen right. fixing, etc. that's going to really nourish those plants with nutrients. Um, yeah, it's well, just it's going to be so much more valuable for your body. Another important reason to buy organic is because of this whole glyphosate issue. We're now finding, and this issue is exploding, that glyphosate, which is Roundup from Monsanto, uh, but it's also sold under other brand names, by the way, it is being sprayed on non-GMO crops, such as wheat and oatmeal and barley, in order to dry them out. It's a, it's a desiccant. It's used by farmers to dry the crops. So they just mass spray the non-GMO wheat, the non-GMO oatmeal, with glyphosate. And then this molecule persists through the washing and the processing and the manufacturing of food. It was found in huge numbers in instant oatmeal just recently, over, I think, 1,200 parts per billion, which is the highest level I've seen in food. There was a European lab that looked at glyphosate in beer, which means that this deadly, deadly molecule, it's a weed killer, survives fermentation and processing and filtration of beer, and it's still there. Wow. Uh, there have been tests conducted on uh, glyphosate in human breast milk. Mothers who were trying to avoid it, and they found it's in their breast milk. So they're feeding glyphosate to their own babies by, by nursing. But, of course, breastfeeding is very, very important. It's, it's super crucial. But you've got to clean up your own diet as a mom so that you're not, in effect, pushing glyphosate through to your child. That's crucial. Uh, again, another huge reason to eat organic. But... This glyphosate issue is going to explode over the next, uh, I mean, it's exploding right now. People are freaking out over this, and, it's, and they should. It's a deadly weed killer. It's linked to cancer, to seizures, infertility, sperm damage, DNA damage, kidney damage. This is a devastating molecule. It's being banned all over Europe. The United States is always last to ban these things because of the EPA and the FDA and the USDA collusion with the biotech industry. So... They will poison us longer here in America than the European authorities will, will allow in their countries. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, the other interesting thing, too, for activists who want to go out and, you know, kind of raise awareness around these sorts of things and, and you know, take legal initiative, for example. I know Shutezkat um, Martinez, he's a young 15-year-old um, Aztec leader who's spoken at the UN and tours the world and runs an organization called Earth Guardians. And um, hmm. he's actually one of the visionary youth uh, speakers that's coming to speak uh, at Unify Fest. One of the things that he's done recently is gathered 21 youth uh, leaders, and they sued the federal government, and they won um, for you know basically polluting um, our country with fossil fuels when they don't need to. And so now where that's going to go and what action's going to come out of that, we don't really know yet. But it's kind of like whether you want to get into that kind of activism and say, look, enough is enough with poisoning our children and our families and our planet. You know, we need to stand up to these, you know, corporations, governments and stuff. Or, you know, you want to do it more subtly, subtle activism. I mean, I think the most subtle activism you can do, the biggest change you can make personally is grow your own food, right? Because... We don't give the power to the corporations anymore, and we say, look, I'm doing this myself. I'm done with that dependency. I, I've said that growing your own food is the greatest act of love and also uh, disobedience <laughs> to the system it, it, at the same time because it's love for yourself and love for the land and love for Mother Nature, but it is also the most rebellious activity that you can perform in a society that exists on these, these cartels, these monopolies, and this collusion between corporate industry and government regulators. You know, the, the regulators in government, the EPA, which regulates pesticides, the FDA, foods, and the USDA, agriculture, 
all of these regulators have abandoned any, just even the appearance of working for the people. They all work solely for industry. They raise the allowable lev levels of exposure of toxic weed killers. They, they cover up the lead poisoning in the water supply in Flint, Michigan, and they poison children deliberately, on purpose. They know what's happening and they cover it up. Uh, the FDA keeps drugs on the market knowing that they're deadly and they're killing people. Look at Vioxx, look at Resolin, look at, look at the history of the FDA. If you as a person, if, if, if you believe that those regulators are protecting your interests in food or clean food or nutritious food, you're, you're being deluded. I'm sorry to say that they don't represent you. They represent corporate interests. Only you can represent you. Only you can grow clean food for your family or maybe in, in your community. You can trade, you can barter food. Maybe there's a CSA, local food co-op, farmers programs, and so on. Those are great. But the government will never empower you on purpose. They don't work for you. They work for industry. And the industry wants you to keep buying their poisons because that's what makes them money. So personal empowerment comes from learning the skills of, of food growth and learning the truth about what's, what they're putting in the food that's in the mainstream food system, like glyphosate. You can live longer, happier, and healthier by growing your own food, period. So you've, um, you've designed a system, which I have and I use, and, and I love it. So I'm happy to mm -hmm. you know, share this with everyone listening because it's something um, you know, I believe in. I've, I've even done a YouTube video and sent it to our entire community uh, probably, oh, thank you. probably a year ago, <laughs> just because I, I, I love how effective and efficient it is, especially for people who are busy that want to grow their own food. And that's the, you mentioned earlier, the, the food rise and grow system. So maybe talk a little more about that, how it works and, and um, you know, give people kind of the insight on it. So first, uh, I want to encourage people to build their own systems. And one of the main messages from food rising is to, to build your own system. We designed it to be a non-electric simple and cheap to build so people could build it anywhere. You don't even need any soil. It doesn't use any soil. It could be used in developing nations, third world countries, disaster areas, you name it. So you can find that at foodrising.org if you want to go there. You see, see how to build your own. Now, the design is based on what's called non-circulating hydroponics, which was really popularized by Professor Kratke out of the University of Hawaii really, I think, over a decade ago, maybe two now. And he observed this being used by this technique, used by farmers in Taiwan who were growing food in, in marshes essentially by suspending the, the plants in rafts above the water. Now what happens when you suspend plants, the, some of their roots are in the air and the, the lower part of their roots are touching the water, the liquid with the liquid nutrients. When you create this situation, which is what our food rising system does, you get root specialization the upper roots become oxygen grabbing, well, I'm sorry, car <laughs> carbon dioxide grabbing roots. Um, and then the, the lower roots become nutrient and, and liquid grabbing roots. So these are, these are bringing in gas. This is, this is sort of like a respiration or the lungs of the plant, if you will, kind of a crude metaphor. And then these are, this is what's uh, bringing up the nutrients. When you do this, you don't have to circulate the water. So you eliminate the pumps, you eliminate the hydroponic uh, complexities, the electricity, the failures of parts and all, all that. And in this system, you can control the inputs, the minerals that go into the water, and it's all yours. You know, it's your control. And you get, you get, uh, you can grow strawberries this way. You can grow uh, herbs, vegetables, lettuces, all kinds of things. Uh, parsley, we grow cilantro, uh, even root vegetables. We grow beets using this method. Uh, I've, I've grown turmeric using this method as well. So, it's, it's very empowering, and you can do it anywhere, on a rooftop, on a balcony, a porch, wherever. So um, everyone watching, just so you know, we'll put links below this video. You can check out the Food Rising links. It'll take you right to the website um, you know, after, after we're done with this interview. Check that out. Um, but So just to uh, recap a little bit, this is something you give the plans out for free. People can build themselves. Um, they can do it at home. It costs them very little to nothing, right, in materials yep. and just time. Um, otherwise, if people don't want to build it, they can just buy it from, from uh, Food Rising. Yeah, we even we build it in a way 
that shows you how easy it would be to build your own. So some people buy one from us to look at it and get it, and then they make their own from there. And that's cool. We totally support that. This is not about selling the product. It's, it's, it's about advocating this idea. But you can take any bin, just a, just a regular you know, bin, and you, you, you drill holes in the lids and you put net pots in there, and then we use coconut core. And then for water... You can either manually add water or you can use a, an automatic float valve that we use. And uh, we've, we've recently improved the system. Version 2 was launched a couple of months ago. And we use a float valve that you can buy on Amazon.com for $8. And then we use just um, PEX tubing that you can get at Home Depot. I mean, we use common parts on purpose because we want to show people how easy it is to do this themselves. Yeah, and I, I just want to, you know, be a testament to that, especially, you know, I do a lot of traveling. We, like last year, we were gone, well, I mean, six months straight on a film tour for our Search for Sustainability series. And, um, you know, when we're traveling like that, you know, I just set it up, put the seeds in, put the water in, put the nutrients in, and we leave. And I come home, <laughs> yeah. I come home and the plants are like just massive, you know, lettuce and yeah. kale and stuff that's just taking over. So especially, like, you know, it, it makes it easy for that sort of thing. I mean, we've also been putting in fruit orchards and permaculture food systems and stuff outside and outdoor gardens. We're building a greenhouse and all that. But for something easy that you can do inside also. I haven't put mine outside yet. I've just grown it inside by the window. Do these work good outside too? I'm sure they do. Yeah, yeah they, work, they work great outside. And, you know, as background for your viewers, look, I've done hydroponics. I've done aeroponics and I've done aquaponics systems, plus lots of soil gardening. Every system is troublesome in its own way. This non-circulating hydroponic system, the food rising system, is by far the easiest system ever. You know, if, you, if you're doing aquaponics, it's great, but if you lose electricity to your air infusion pumps, all your fish die in right. minutes. Okay? Right. Devastating. If you're doing hydroponics and your circulation pumps break, your roots dry out in maybe hours and you lose the whole crop. And aeroponics is also has similar problems. So I believe in redundant, low-tech systems. These are low-tech. It doesn't look like an iPhone. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not the coolest, sleek and sexiest food system. It's the most reliable food system. Right. It grows food whether you're there or not. Power grid goes down. Still grows food. Right. That's what we need. That's what I love about it. Exactly. It's just, uh, it's simple and it's reliable, especially those who are trying to get away from electricity dependency or recognize that, you know, we have way too much dependency on it for all of our yep. systems. And so anyway, you know, I just, I can't say enough good things about it. I encourage everyone to get one, whether you build one or buy it or get the parts or whatever. I mean, um, I've got three of them. So, you know, you can, you can grow quite a bit. You can go a decent amount. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm running like 24 of them right now, <laughs> personally. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, a lot. Yeah. So as we kind of, so again, you know, check that out. We'll put links below the video, check out the food rising system. I encourage you to get one as we kind of wind down here. What are some other kind of maybe key final insights you give, you would like to give people watching who are really excited to, to get growing their own food? Well, I, I, I want to say times are changing so rap rapidly out there. The paradigms are shifting. Uh, through the 1970s, 80s, and 90s and so on, the message was that only poor people grow their own food, but sophisticated people eat Wonder Bread. You know, that, that kind of message, which was a joke because then, of course, they all got diabetes and cancer and everything from all the processed food. That era is over. It's changing. Uh, the, paradigms, the, the, the paradigm shift is underway. People are more and more aware of what's in their food. They're demanding food transparency. They're demanding cleaner food. And they are increasingly waking up and being absolutely stunned and shocked when they find out what's in the food that they thought was clean. You know, the heavy metals sometimes in, in certain products from China, for example, or the glyphosate in the oatmeal. Just a couple of examples, but there are many more. Um, I run this lab to bring food transparency to the world. You know, we publish all our information freely. Uh, we're going to be publishing new data here shortly on chocolate bars and cadmium and lead 
in, in chocolate, and they're, most of them are very clean, by the way. I'm not trying to cause alarm, but you'll be able to see the results and download them at cwclabs.com. But what we're doing is a reflection of what everybody else really wants, which is food transparency. And the bottom line is, the only way to be absolutely sure of what's in the food you're eating is to grow it yourself. So your goal, I think, should be to expand. Maybe you can grow 5% of your food today. That's a start. That's better than most people. But expand it to 10% or, or 15 or 20 if you can get to even 20% of your diet being grown at home, you're doing really well. And there are ways to then expand it beyond that. You know, in the past when I lived in South America, I literally grew 70% of my diet. Uh, I can't do that right now. I don't have the time. <laughs> but I grow a significant percent and, and I'm always striving to do more. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I mean super important, great words of encouragement and... Um, the websites that that uh, you know that, that you mentioned, CWC Labs. Obviously, you run NaturalNews.com. Um, That's right. I mean, a lot of articles, a lot of great content come out there. A lot of you know updates, uh, exposing a lot of the things that are going on, raising awareness around what's going on with the food. So, we'll yeah. put those links below the video too, as well. Check out Natural News. Check out CWC Labs. Um, uh, go ahead. I just want to mention. We're going to be covering glyphosate very intensely this year, and we've just launched glyphosate.news, so you can check that out. We are covering the EPA and the FDA on these food issues, and you can find that at epa.news and fda.news as well. Naturalnews.com is a great overall view of what's happening, but we're doing a lot more specialized sites to really focus on, on these particular issues, especially glyphosate. Uh, you're going to see this issue explode over the next few months as more and more labs gain the capability to test for glyphosate, which is very difficult to test for. It's a, it's a deceptive molecule, just like the deceptive industry that pushes it. Kind of interesting. Mm. It's, it's actually really hard to find. Um, even with the best instruments like what we have here, it's very difficult. So uh, watch for all that breaking news uh, throughout the rest of 2016 and beyond. It's really, it's really starting to just balloon. And you're going to have new machines there that you'll be able to test it more effectively? Well, we already have the instruments here. Ah, okay. Uh, what, what you do is called method development and method validation. Uh, the, every molecule, like right now we test for pesticides and herbicides. We can test for lots of them. That, that's relatively straightforward, but there are certain molecular compounds such as glyphosate, which is, um, uh, ju it is very, very hard to extract and hard to detect in the instruments. But what we have here is liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, uh, time of flight systems. We also have an ICP for uh, heavy metals analysis that we use all the time. So we've got the instruments. It's just a question of uh, what's the right method. Right. Got it. Great. So, yeah, we've been talking with Mike Adams with Natural News and CWC Labs. Um, for everyone tuning in, um, I want to share with you as well, if you've missed any of the interviews during the summit and you would like to own all of them, listen to them, watch them again and again, plus check out some other great additions that we've put together for you, um, and you want to support this movement and support the work that we're doing, then go to the selfreliancesummit.com forward slash upgrade. Um, there should be an upgrade button on this page somewhere as well, probably below the video. Check that out. You know, we made all of these talks very reasonable. We want to get this information out to as many people as possible. So we thank you all for tuning in and, and for supporting and for, for upgrading. It helps us continue to do this work that we do. The other website I want to share as well is uh, unifyfest.com. It's a four-day festival based on sustainability and self-reliance great music, hands-on training, workshops, um, actually getting your hands, learning how to build with Adobe and Cobb, you know, learning how to forage for, for wild edibles, how to make your own medicine. Sounds cool. Yeah, a lot of great, you know, natural, sustainable, self-reliant um, workshops, Which, uh, as well as music. Where is that being held? It's in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Wow. Yeah, nice. yeah. We're, we have a 200-acre, super pristine property um, that uh, Unify Fest is happening this year. There's creeks and acacias and giant cottonwoods and fruit orchards and wow. vineyards. It's all organic farming. We're doing. Man, we're I would doing, love that. Yeah, we're doing permaculture on the land. Plus, we have like 
50 or 60 bands coming. So there's music, there's yoga, there's workshops. It's four days of just like awesomeness. <laughs> wow. Where, when is that happening? It's September, uh, September 22nd through the 25th. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah, we'll chat more about it for sure. You know, if you can make it yeah. out, it'd be great. And, um, everyone else tuning in, check it out. Unifyfest.com. Um, all of the lineup should be just about, uh, uh, it's just about on the website. So anyway, you know, Mike, hey, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate you sharing your time. It's always a great pleasure. and appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you, Nathan. I, I, I love uh, talking on this subject. I love what you're doing. I'm happy to help support you in any way we can. Awesome. Thanks, brother. And thanks you all for tuning in. And um, we'll talk to you next time on the Self-Reliance Summit. Take care. <laughs>